I'm so excited to speak with you. No, the honors from me. It's really crazy to be talking to you like this. I, I'm just, I'm so proud of you. I have been watching you. I've been watching you for more ways than you know, which I'm gonna share as we talk today. I've also been watching you too since I was little. So Aww. it's really crazy to be talking to you like this. I'm gonna start off with what we're talking about today, which is you are the first black female athlete to be on the cover of SI Swim. Of course, I've been watching you and seeing how you, your voice is so strong for social justice. You do not back away from it. Sports Illustrated has been very vocal with breaking down a lot of beauty barriers and a lot of beauty stereotypes. And, and here you are. And so I wanna know what that feels like to you. I wouldn't have thought that I would have been the first one, but I'm glad that this barrier is being broken and I hope there are many, many more people to come and I'm sure there are going to be. And for me, I I feel like I've always been one to not want to use my voice, um, but then I feel like there's also a lot of things that has happened and um, over the past year, I just felt like, you know, there has to be someone that speaks about uncomfortable things. And what has the response been from you speaking about those uncomfortable things? For me, I always think about my immediate family first, and I was a little bit worried for them because I feel like everyone knows about the situation that happened in the U.S. Open, and that's sort of what I'm known for when people think of me and using my voice. So, you know, as long as the people... You were Are you talking about yeah. the mask where you... Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I just felt like, you know, as long as the people that I love support me, I was going to be okay in the end. I love that you're thinking about more than yourself and thinking about your family, but at the same time thinking of the millions of people who have been ignored, abused, and I commend you for using your platform to continue the message and to continue that fight. So when I say I've been watching you, I've been watching you for some family reasons too. So um, I have family mem a family member that I'm very close to. My, she's she's our, our precious Cindy and she is African-American and Japanese. I know you're Haitian-American and Japanese. I want to talk about that because I remember when Cindy was young, she didn't have role models like you that looked like you, that looked like her, to tell her that she is beautiful in her uniqueness. Um, have you had young girls come to you, come up to you or write you on social media and talk about what you represent uh, for them, for their self-esteem and, and being seen? Um, yeah, I actually had um, a couple letters from half black, half Japanese kids. They said that um, they didn't really feel that seen or accepted, or people didn't really understand um, their story that well. And I know that you're the only one that can write your own story, but um, in those letters, they said that it felt good to have a representation. And for me, that meant a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our family thanks you just for your existence because I always say that if you sometimes can't see it, you can't dream it. Or if you can't see it, you can't rep you can't appreciate your own beauty sometimes when you don't see it represented in the world. You know, you tend to think, okay, I am other, I'm different um, because I'm not represented. So you've done a lot for our family. So thank you for that. I want to talk about your mentors. Who did you look up to growing up? And who does Naomi Osaka call or tweet like, yo, can you help me out with this? Who's that? For me, my mentors would definitely be my parents. You know, I've seen them go through so much, just the difficulties of raising me and my sister. And for me, my mom, she's such a strong woman. So when I think of female empowerment, I think of her a lot because mm -hmm. um, <laughs> she always tends to try to tell us that she's a strong um, middle-aged Asian woman and she can do everything and stuff like that. So. For me, um, my parents are definitely my role models, and um, I I also really um, like looked up to and respect Kobe a lot. Oh yeah, Kobe Bryant. I remember um, I was lucky enough to talk to him in person and actually get his phone number, and I would always ask him for advice. He would just be like the mentor that I, I needed at the time. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. So well, we will always remember him, won't we? Yeah. yeah. And when you talk about your mom and, and her strength and as a, a role model for you, whenever I would get that question in interviews, it's the same answer I would give. 
is my mama. Um, so can you talk about your family a little bit more and what they mean to you? I know your sister. I love you guys' relationship and the creativity that you guys have together and how she's a designer. So if you can talk about that a little bit more too, it'd be great. Yeah, so for me, my family means everything. I definitely wouldn't be here without any of my family members. My dad is the reason why we got into tennis. And that was because he watched Serena and Venus playing one day and he decided that me and my sister should do the same thing. And my mom, she's the backbone of the whole family. She actually worked all day so she could provide for, you know, me and my sister's training. We wouldn't see her until dinner time. Mm -hmm. um, and then she would, you know, leave before we got up in the morning. So every um, weekend was a great time for all of us because we could see her more than we usually do. And my sister, she's the one I wanted to be like. So when I was little, she would beat me because she was also a tennis player. So she would beat me every day and I would get really competitive and declare to her that um, I'm going to be better than you and I'm going to beat you tomorrow. So I feel like I took personality traits from all of my family members and tried to mesh them into myself. And how would you describe your personality? What would you say that is? When I first came into like everything, I would tell people that I was shy all the time. And I feel like that is still very true. But I also feel like I don't like to talk unless I have knowledge on the things that are being um, discussed. And for me, I'd really love to observe more than anything. You know who you remind me of? I don't know if you've ever heard this. Are you ready? Okay. Beyonce. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. Let me tell you why, Miss Naomi. You remind me of Beyonce. I've, I've spent time with Beyonce. I've interviewed her many, many times. And she would interview with me and just be very like kind of soft-spoken and, you know, just this, this beautiful, like kind of reserved personality. And then she gets out on the stage and turns into Sasha Fierce and all of that and boom, boom, boom. And then I would even ask her about stuff after. And she's like, girl, I don't even remember that I did that. You said I rolled on your floor and I crawled on my knees and I sang into the camera and teared up. I don't even remember. And so when I, I look at you and I see you like do your interview and then you get on the court and then that post interview, it's Sasha Fierce. It is Naomi Fierce. It's like a good strategy. Like, hi, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna play this game. <gasps> pow, 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 bam. I say hold all that power for that court because it's working. It is so, so working. And I think there's something about your spirit that is extremely approachable and sweet and warm. So I think I think it's really, really special. I want to ask you, if you were not a pro tennis player, what would you be doing? What do you think? When I was little, I wanted to be a marine biologist. Oh, wow. But then I suddenly developed this fear of the ocean. <laughs> so that sort of drove me away from wanting to do that. And then I, I wanted to become a zoologist because they're primarily on land. So I, I thought that would be a better fit. Got it. Well, so your dad um, put you in tennis because he would look at the Williams sisters, he'd look at Serena and Venus and say, my babies can do that. And not only did your daddy's baby do that, your daddy's baby, I mean, Miss Naomi Osaka beat Serena Williams. And that was a win that was heard around the world. What did that mean to you? I was definitely very nervous, but I also felt like I dreamed about that moment, you know? Like the night before the match, I I realized that this is something that I've dreamed of doing since I was a kid. And no matter what happens, you know, I think my parents were proud of me. And for me, I felt like that was the biggest thing that I could take away from that. Even after I won that match, um, my first like reaction was wanting to see, you know, where my dad was because he never watches my matches ever. So does your dad not watch because it's too much uh, just emotional duress for him? Does he get nervous? Why does he not watch? I think it's because he gets really nervous, but he's convinced everyone else that it's because he has a superstition about it. Oh, he thinks it's like um, gonna jinx it or something if he's yeah. watching. Yeah. 
I know that you are co-chairing the Met Gala. So yeah, definitely a bit nervous for this whole experience. I've only seen pictures of the Met online and I've always wanted to go, but I never thought my first occasion of going would be being a co-chair. So I feel like it's it's gonna be something really special and I'm really honored to um, you know be in the position that I'm in right now. And as for what I'm gonna wear, I, I know, but I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say yet, so. Oh, you don't have to say the designer, but do we have a color of the outfit? There's red in there. <laughs> okay, that's all we need, a little red. Okay, let's play a guessing game. Is there a little lace in it? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a ruffle? Is it to the knee? Is it a mini skirt? Is it flowing on the floor? I'm gonna let you be surprised, I think. Oh, okay. So we're just gonna go with red. I like it. She's a woman of mystery. She's like red. And I know <laughs> Anna Wintour is watching right now. Miss Anna Wintour is going, you better not say anything, Miss Naomi. You better keep your mouth shut. <laughs> so <laughs> Anna Wintour is too proud. She listened. Um, so I'm gonna let you go. I, you know, I don't even know how you have time to do this when you need to focus, but arigato, arigato. Thank you so much. And congratulations on your SI cover. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>